Yes, hot topic for content creators. The topic, the most recent topic that I pitched was, is traditional publishing obsolete? Now, with hot topic for content creators, this is that's where I pitch a hot topic to you guys, and then you guys take that and run with it and go ahead and create your own content and upload it on YouTube. And if you tag me in the video, then I may feature your video during a future broadcast. There's no time limit on any of these hot topics. I do have a playlist on my channel, so you can go back and you can revisit any hot topic that I uh, previously pitched during the show. And, uh, you know, toss in your two cents, if you will, on this. Now, let's see. I did notice that we had a couple of comments that I would like to address. From Jocelyn Carter, she was in on the on the uh, the first hot topic as well. Uh, she says, "I don't think Trad Pub is obsolete. There are just a lot more authors taking a chance on self publishing options that are out there, especially since there are so many professional services available for indie authors now, and you can create projects that are of the same quality as traditional published works." Uh, those are great points. So let me go through this again. I don't think Trad Pub is obsolete. So you don't think it's obsolete, but then you don't give me any any reason why you don't think it's obsolete. That's the thing. And that's what I was wondering. Like, what is it that Trad Pub offers me as the writer that I couldn't do myself? Because then you go on to say uh, you can create projects that are the same quality as traditional published works. Uh, and also especially since there are so many professional services available for indie authors now. Exactly. So like with trad pub, the fact that they would have like maybe their own in-house editors that you would be working with, or you'd have an assigned editor that you'd be working with. I can just hire an editor, uh, an independent editor that hot, that offers those professional services. So I don't have to be traditionally published in order to uh, take advantage of that service. Jocelyn, if you see this, I want you maybe uh, maybe give me the flip side of that. Say you you don't think Trad Pub is obsolete. Okay, why? I understand where you're coming from with all the indie stuff. Now tell me why Trad Pub is not obsolete. The next one's coming from Lou Yardley. She is an independent author. Speaking of which, I don't think Trad Pub is obsolete but it's possible to do more and more now through self-publishing, so it makes it a less attractive option. I think in order for it to, to become entirely obsolete, there would need to be an easier way for self-published slash indie authors to get their books into bricks and mortar stores. Great point. That is a great point, by the way, and that does bring up something that I wanted to talk about myself, but I was hoping that there was going to be someone out there that would bring this up. So, great. Uh, she says, at the moment, many of these shops are reluctant to take a chance on indie books for whatever reason, so they'll only stock trad pub releases. If we're ever in a position where I can get my book into whatever shop I want without issue, then I'd say that Trad Pub has had its day. Okay, before I go on, I left a very long and thoughtful comment. I do appreciate that, Lou. Uh, let me talk about real estate real quick. So that's one thing that I was thinking about when I was coming up with this topic is bricks and mortar. So, uh, as far as bricks and mortar go on the trad pub side, I think that they're definitely will probably be going through some downsizing and some reorganizing uh, because the cost for for upkeep in terms of bricks and mortar definitely hits their bottom line. And with the rise of independent publishing, I really don't think that it's necessary unless you have an in-house press. And in, even in that case, you could just do that probably out of like a studio apartment or something like that. I really don't think you need a lot of real estate to run a press, but hey, I digress. What 
Lou is addressing here is kind of a gatekeeping type thing where it's like where traditional publishing somehow means accreditation. So that could be another topic in and of itself, but I could address it in this context in the sense that uh, people are still under the impression there's still that stigma that comes along with being independently published or self-published that somehow your work is less accredited than something that is traditionally published. I think that that's something about educating the consumer. And I think that there are more consumers out there that are kind of, you know, they're, they're smartening up the, the average consumer. When it gets to the point where the average consumer is able to kind of do their own homework and they're getting involved in the markets and they're not just consuming whatever the mainstream spoon feeds them and they're actually like getting involved in social media they're getting involved and they're engaging in the markets because that's one thing is like with indie the markets are very it's it's very much about being engaged in the market it's a community based type market so it's like and, and that's part of the fun of it is going out there, getting your hands dirty and trying to discover those rare gems out there. But the thing about it, as more and more people get out there and the creators and, and writers are becoming educated because there are more resources out there and they're more accessible to, to the average writer and artist and creator out there that it's only natural that the quality is going to increase. And then the average consumer will begin to realize that stigma of being self-published, of being an independent writer will kind of fade away, especially since nowadays where mainstream is just pumping out so much garbage that I think that they're like doing it on purpose at this point, just to kind of like troll people and just kind of like, they're rage baiting the consumers. And I think at some point in time, it's just going to shoot the mainstream in the foot in, in the other foot, I should say. So, I mean, they've already shot themselves in the foot once um, by catering to the wrong markets. And now I think that they're shooting themselves in the, in the, in the other foot. So they don't have a leg to stand on when they continue to push out this rage bait uh, garbage that they're pushing out these days where the consumer is just going to be fed up and they're going to go to other markets. So I think it's like inevitable that the indie scene is going to be on the rise. And it's not an, a thing where it's driven by idolatry as much as it's, it's about building community. And I think that's what I like most about the indie scene over the mainstream is you're not here to kiss. We're not here to kiss anyone's ass. Um, we're here to, uh, you know, create, we're here to create good, or quality works and and discover what else is out there when the mainstream is unable to deliver what it is that the consumer wants. Let's see what else Lou has to say. Would I ever want to be traditionally published? I know you didn't ask this, but I thought I'd answer it anyway. Never say never, but I like the freedom I have with self-publishing. I can write to my own schedule. I can write pretty much anything I want and not have to worry if it's into the image the traditional publisher has. I can release six books in a year or one book in six years. But if the deal was right, I might be tempted to go trad, but it would have to be 100% right. And to be honest, I don't think any traditional publishers would ever be interested in my weird stories. Well, never say never, like you say. But for me, I mean, I would want I would want to maintain total creative freedom. And a lot of what I've heard from around the, the grapevine in author tube is that trad publishers aren't really interested uh, in in giving you full creative license. Uh, the right to exercise full creative license. They want to have some sort of influence on your work. So what, what I was talking about with uh, marketing, what holds a lot of people back from indie publishing or self-publishing is the stigma of that you are not an accredited author. Like you think, and I'll say right now that like, um, just because you're traditionally published, 
doesn't automatically mean that you have that it's quality work. Uh, this isn't a shit on anyone that is traditionally published. It's just stating it as a matter of fact. And a, this has been a topic of conversation around author two for a while now. Like people, if, if you know, you know, like, and if you're in the know, then you already know what's up as far as trad pub goes and the quality of the type of books that come out of trad pub. Just, uh, it may be fine in terms of editing wise, like, uh, in, in other words, word for word through cover to cover in terms of the editing and the syntax of the book. But in terms of the quality of the entertainment or what you get out of the book, uh, the content, the material itself, not always on par with a lot of the type of stuff that's coming out of the indie market. Uh, and a lot of authors are already aware of this who are in the know. Um, so there's that. So there, I think that a lot of these people who like to post in their Twitter bio sections that they're querying, um, I think there's like that allure of being considered a, a pro in the sense of you're an accredited published author. Um, so not necessarily to take that achievement away from people, but what I would say is think about the amount of time and the amount of rejections rejection after rejection after rejection that you're getting in the amount of time that you're that could that you're sitting on a manuscript like you have manuscript like a manuscript a lot of you it's only one manuscript like i would suggest if you're going to be querying to publishers out there like you need to be continuing to churn out work especially if you're sitting on there because it could be months because what i do understand about trad pub is that even if you get a deal it's still going to be your book is still months before your book actually hits the market so it's a process like you need to be churning out work like you need to be one hell of a, a prolific writer if you have the time to just sit on a on a manuscript for months and months and months and continue to be sending out query letters to all these uh, agents and, and publishers out there. Um, I, I, I just would, from just an entrepreneurial standpoint, I really see that as a waste of time where you could just be getting right down to business, you know, cut out the middleman, cut out the bullshit and just get right down to business. What are you waiting for? What are you afraid of? You know what I mean? Get your hands dirty, get down there in the trenches Put your work out there, stand behind your product and just get down to business, get it done. You know what I'm saying? I think in the long run, you're doing yourself a favor uh, because in terms of marketing goes, this segues right into my other point where trad pub now basically gets to the, is at the level where they're like, okay, now they're like, they expect you to have a following. They expect you to have a social media presence. Well, how are you going to have a social media presence and you're going to have a readership if you're not even publishing any work on your own? Nobody knows what you have. I would say you run a blog and then that can give readers a sampling of your work if you don't want to publish an actual novel and you want to save that sweet, sweet debut novel for a trad pub um, deal. Then you could start a blog and publish like flash fiction, shorter format fiction, that type of stuff, or do like a Kindle Vela type deal, like a Patreon type thing where you do like serialized fiction and you try to build up your own audience and maybe you can make a little cheddar along the way. But I'll tell you right now, like if I'm going to sign a trad pub deal and they're already expecting me to bring a readership to the table and already have a social media following and expect me to do some of my own marketing, it's not worth it for me. You know what I mean? What do I get out of the friggin' deal? A little bit advance money and, 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 and a, my own personal editor that I could just hire, you know, cause money isn't really an issue as far as that goes. You can hire an editor um, fairly inexpensive. It's not going to be that big of a deal uh, to hire an editor. There's a lot of quality uh, ed editing services out there right now that could handle a lot of the light work for you, you know, as far as uh, making sure your book reads well. 
So for me, it would definitely be a marketing thing, marketing and sales. Like I like twofold. Here's the two things and that I would suggest to anybody that is thinking about. And now even then I wouldn't go exclusive. I would do a hybrid deal. I would say, okay, I'm retaining rights to a lot of my work that you guys will never be able to touch. And I would also still have the freedom to work with other independent presses or put out, publish my own stuff whenever I see fit. However, it would be a hybrid deal where I say, okay, maybe I will do a, a two or three book deal with a specific publisher um, and that's it. It's just those three books and I would still want to hold a creative license as far as those books go. In other words, no stupid influence like you're going to force me to put in dumbass tropes that I don't want to have in my material and that type of stuff. Marketing. I would definitely expect, uh, I would want to know up front what kind of marketing campaigns, what kind of marketing and advertising deals the publisher is going to be offering me. Uh, if it's nothing, I'm not, you know, I'm not necessarily expecting billboards in Times Square, uh, but you know, there has to be some sort of plan that would sweeten the deal for me. And then number and then number two, and the bigger one would be open doors and opportunities to other avenues. So I'm talking movie deals. I'm talking being able to sit down with agents in the industry and they and and uh, be able to get my foot in the door of of different avenues where my work could be featured. So for instance, like if it was like movie deals, show deals, getting, getting, working with producers that could turn it into a series featured on Netflix or Amazon prime or something like that. If you're not getting that type of stuff from a trad pub deal, because you know, these people are connected, you know, they have the means to make that happen. So if you're not negotiating I'm just saying this is the type of stuff that I would be negotiating in my deal. And if I'm not getting this in my deal, then fuck it. Just just fucking stay stay indie because they're still going to expect you basically you're going to be they're going to try and convince you to do all the heavy lifting for them. And then all I'm simply asking is what the hell am I getting in return? I'm saying negotiate that into a deal. At least an option I'd say a lot of you guys are out there and you're querying you're querying these trad publishers under the idea that you're going to get some sort of accreditation. Like I'm and I'm telling you straight out like that's coming from an a, an idolatry standpoint where you're like ooh I'm trad published but no one gives a shit at the end of the day, as more and more people get involved in this indie sphere, no one's going to give a shit that you're trad published. Like there's no air of superiority there. So get that out of your head because you're playing right into their game. And they're saying, oh yeah, you're going to be trad published. You're going to be big time. You're in the big leagues now. They want to get that crap in your head and get you thinking like, yeah, I'm going to be special. I'm going to be somebody. When it's like, dude, they're playing you for a fool, seriously, um, because then <laughs> they're playing like you're being a you're you're going to be a puppet for them and you're going to be jumping through hoops and doing your own marketing. And at the end of the day, you're going to be like, oh, I'm trad pubbed, but, you know, I'm still working a day job looking like a joke. man. I mean, <laughs> that's my opinion, but I'm saying like if I get a trad pub deal, like why am I why would I still be working a day job? Are you kidding me? Might as well just be independent and then do this on the side. You know what I'm saying? You guys are better off because then you can get right down to business, cut cut out the bullshit. But you guys, there's still plenty to talk about as far as this topic goes. So if you guys want to produce a video, you want to leave some comments.